Hey guys, thank you for watching. Ivan Blaskos here. Welcome back. So I actually wrote an article on soy, uh, a bodybuilder's friend or foe. I wrote it back, I think it was 2009 or maybe 2011. Anyway, I'll go ahead and put, put a link to that article at the bottom of this video. I wrote it for bodybuilding.com and it stands as probably, I think arguably, probably one of my best articles. I mean, it was so, and here's the, here's the kicker. I was not a vegan when I wrote that article. That ought to be an eye opener in terms of the fact that it's unbiased. I wrote it as a non-vegan, okay? Now, I highly encourage you to check out that link at your convenience, but let me just go ahead and dive into what I'm gonna talk about today. What is Tofi? Well, I'd like to give credit to Robin right here. You can check out her video. She made a video um, explaining the difference between subcutaneous fat, which is the fat that's on the outside, and visceral fat, which is the fat that's on the inside. And she referred to it as Tofi, which by the way, I Googled it, and it's actually, um, it's actually a couple of um, couple articles on it, and there's even a YouTube video by a medical doctor talking about it. Tofi is thin on the outside, fat on the inside. In other words, being skinny fat or being apple shaped, having a lot of visceral fat. Now, what does soy have to do with it? Well, I figured tofu and tofi, nice little plain words, but guess what? There's a science behind that plain words, and I'm about to I'm about to show you. Not only me talking at, later in this video, I'm gonna actually graphically and schematically show you some research studies and it's gonna get pretty awesome. So hold on to your um, hold, hold on to your hats, I guess, as I was trying to say, hold on to your seats. So the, the big protein that I'm talking about with soy is called beta-conglycinin. I probably didn't pronounce that right, but basically it's a protein that accounts for 20% of the protein in soybeans, okay? And it's also the potential active component responsible for a lot of the um, anti-obesity and visceral fat burning effects of soy um, in particular. Now, this study that I'm looking at, what they found was that there was lowered levels of the amino acid methionine in blood following, in blood flowing from the digestive tract to the liver caused by this, this protein, um, which is interesting because what this means is, this means that this protein is actually a protein restriction mimetic, which is insane. What that means is it mimics the effect. It's remember I talked about in my fiber video how I said um, that you know fiber could be a, a, a protein restriction. It, it could be like a protein blocker. I think that's what I said. Well, here we're looking at soy, which also has fiber. It's a legume, by the way. But this protein is actually a protein restriction mimetic. And how do I know this? Well, it increases FGF. 21, FGF 21. I talked about that in my protein restriction, my protein dilution video right there. And now we're talking about it again, how it's coming full circle, validating my authenticity of information and how it's just continuing to escalate in a positive manner to make a difference and to clarify uh, perhaps confusion out there in the mass mainstream media of information uh, that's not just on what we read, it's also on the internet and our, you know, on our phone, we can, you know, information is so available to us, readily available, which also opens up the door for misinformation. I'm going to have all the studies for everything, I, everything, pretty much everything I say at the bottom of this video in the video description as I usually do, particularly in videos like this where I'm discussing, a, 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 you know, research-based information. So in this study, uh, the researchers state that the difference in the amino acid composition between uh, milk protein casein and the soy protein beta conglycinin, the difference in particular is the methionine content uh, is approximately one-third uh, in soy compared to what's found in casein. So as you can see, it actually, now first off, soy is a complete protein. That's huge, okay? I also think that might be a, a, a part, partly uh, a driver for, the, for this um, you know, this kind of dissing and, and kind of the debate on the controversy of soy. And I know the whole GMO issue and all that stuff. Um, that's, that's, that's kind of outside of the scope of this video. I'm trying to focus on the visceral fat aspects. In fact, that all those issues, many of them, I encourage you to read my video on, on, uh, on soy that I wrote for bodybuilding.com once again. I tackle a lot of those issues. Um, now, back to what we're talking about here. So it has one third in fact, there's studies that show that methionine restriction exerts beneficial health effects. Well, soy protein is like a methionine restrictive. It's, it's, it's a 
low methionine protein source based on this research, which is phenomenal, which makes sense because when you restrict methionine, then uh, you know, then you have the health benefits, but also the correlation with the, L the increase in um, FGF 21, which occurs in, in a caloric restrictive state, caloric restriction, okay? Uh, protein restriction and caloric restriction are kind of interesting because there's a lot of similarities. They're not exactly the same, but they're similar, okay? Has to do with this anabolic catabolic signaling that I've been talking about in a lot of my videos, okay? When we restrict protein and calories, we're getting more catabolic, okay? Um, Self-digesting, if you will. I made a video on autophagy, um, courtesy of Dr. Rhonda Patrick. She inspired me to really kind of, you know, dive deep into this uh, topic. This is all connected, guys. It's all connected, okay? So, also, they found that among the essential amino acids, they found decreased concentrations of methionine, like I said, threonine, tryptophan, and valine, which is one of the branch chain amino acids. And I'll, later, I'll show a graph. They actually looked at uh, casein protein and, 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 the, uh, and the soy protein, particularly this, this uh, beta conglycinin, and the amino acid levels were lower in the beta conglycinin. So while we may not be as anabolic, it actually may be more beneficial because it has a cholesterol suppressing effect, particularly with triglycerides, which you'll see later in this video, and a potent effect on reducing belly fat. So, oh, and it also increases adiponectin. I'll have that study down below in the bottom of this video, all right? So without any further ado, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just go into these graphs. So sit back, enjoy, and keep watching. All right, you guys, so in this first graph, what we're looking at here is this is actually, I think this is actually their initial paper, and then they had it published in Scientific Reports. In fact, that link will be down below. And I just really want to bring your attention here to the serum, the, the FGF21, which is what we're talking about here, okay? So as you could see, at the, in the green box, I just went ahead and, high, and boxed it in red, you have an increased FGF21 FGF expression and it increases serum levels, and that has anti-obesity and metabolic improvement, okay? That tends to happen in, in caloric restrictive states, the increase in FGF21. Now, this is fascinating that this is happening with protein. Protein tends to be, you know, anabolic. It tends to, um, you know, be a building up kind of a substance. So the fact that this soy protein is acting as a, as a caloric restriction slash protein restriction mimetic, while still building muscle and being a complete protein, this may be on the brink of cutting edge because, you know, this could be a game changer in terms of distinguishing the difference between animal versus plant protein. And I've always talked about plant protein being low insulinogenic, okay? And also low, well, it's low insulinogenic. And so it's going to build muscle, but it's not gonna suppress fat burning as much, okay? Now, let me bring you over to the left-hand side of this here where we're looking at, see that red arrow? There's the, there's the soy protein right there in blue, and then you have the amino acid mixture in that, in that kind of that greenish bar, and then you have the casein in the red. Now you look on the left-hand, the, the axis there, and the free, um, free amino acids, and then you have the time, okay? Look at the soy protein. It's so much lower. I mean, lower levels, but the casein spikes it, okay? Now, again, drawing your attention to the right, okay? You have low free amino acid levels, okay? Which is kind of synonymous with protein restriction, particularly BCAA restriction. And one of those amino acids that uh, soy protein tends to be lower in is, or is uh, valine, which is one of the branching amino acids. And then you have anti-obesity and metabolic improvement because of this increase in FGF21. So this is fascinating stuff, guys. Now here's another study that they referenced about diet, there's another schematic on dietary protein restriction. As you can see, it increases FGF21 expression, okay? So I just wanted to bring your attention to this schematic as well, kind of corroborating what we just talked about with soy protein. So with that guys, um, thank you for watching. Once again, hopefully this video gave you some information that you were not aware of. So um, soy is definitely, uh, by and large, research is showing in, in, in particular, in this, in, in this video, in particular in regards to fat loss, it definitely is very effective at fat loss, okay? So with that, guys, uh, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. And as always, I appreciate you taking the time. Tune in next time. Thank you for watching. Take care.